Hey everyone, so in this video, as per the title, I'm going to be showing you how to update the Apple TV 4K to the beta software. So in order to do this, as per the on-screen, so what you want to do is go to General, System, Down to Software Updates, and then you want to select the beta option. What you'll then have to do is agree to the terms and conditions, essentially, because obviously um, you're essentially signing up for something where it's very very difficult to downgrade again so therefore you have to be aware of the risks before doing so if you're not aware of those obviously I suggest you go on the website have, have a quick read of that after that obviously you just click confirm for download and install this will then follow through the process um, the initial download probably takes about a minute to two minutes um, I do have a pretty fast internet connection so if you if your internet connection isn't as fast it may take a little longer but it'll, it'll take roughly about two minutes uh, once it's downloaded the initial software then it'll uh, restart and it'll go through the process of actually installing the beta software this for me took roughly around 10 minutes what i've actually done is i've sped up this whole section uh by two just so then this video doesn't drag on too long with it literally just on a loading screen um with that said basically i wanted to just touch on why i've actually decided to do this and obviously give you guys an idea of um, why i can risk this and why i still would suggest that most of you probably don't so the reason I actually decided to install this was basically because of the LG t uh, TV my C9 OLED now because I've got all of the apps so I've got all four main uh, streaming providers on there with their uh, own apps essentially and as you'll have seen from my recent videos uh, comparing the the various platforms it's very rare that one um, app is actually better on one device as opposed to the other so for for the most part the c9 performed really well uh, for all, all of the mainstream apps compared to the apple tv 4k um, the apple tv 4k still was better in some instances but the built-in apps were good enough to the point where it wouldn't have caused an issue for me so basically essentially i'm looking at looking at it um in the, in the way of it doesn't really matter if if performance isn't that good because generally I can just use the built-in apps on the TV anyway so I've got that as a fallback that's why I've actually decided to do it on this particular Apple TV and not the one in the other room which the kids use more now um, what I'll do is seen as this is already loading up and everything um, what I'm going to do is I will just give you a little bit of a spoiler in terms of what I've actually experienced once it did boot up so as I said it took roughly around 10 minutes to actually install once it's booted up there were a few things that I was looking out for hoping that they would have been there um, so initially it was something to do with either the cameras or um, some sort of automation in order to set up up, um, cameras to pop up um, that aren't HomeKit certified so they're not a HomeKit doorbell so I did do a quick search and I, I'm not entirely sure which ones which doorbells are actually HomeKit doorbells um, that particular feature I really liked and that's something that I would like to in integrate because it would make life a lot easier for me but with that said basically in terms of the home app or the home shortcut in the control panel it is literally just giving you scenes it's not actually giving you every icon as it does in the home uh, home app on your phone or on your ipad so that's a little bit disappointing i was hoping that it would actually display all of my icons and or give me the option to switch between scenes and actual icons and switches and things like that with that said for what i would use it for i've still got my movie scene and the scene that i use once the movies are finished um, which basically what that does is it turns off all the lights and loads up um, a particular app when I'm starting to watch a movie and when I finish watching a movie it, it'll literally just turn off the Apple TV it'll turn off the uh, LG TV it'll turn off my soundbar and it'll turn the room light on so then basically we can see how, where we're going um, so that's obviously going to be useful now in terms of performance um, as you'll see from the um, on-screen kind of video um, it I run through some of the settings just looking for any any new settings essentially there's very little that's actually changed um, the only settings that I could actually find were with regards to the video wallpapers where you can now choose to disable certain ones if you don't like them so for example the space ones um, I never really like those particular ones that I find them a little bit too dark and they don't really have a lot of other detail in there so for that reason um, you can literally go in and disable whichever ones you want to 
Apart from that, the only real things that I noticed were the fact that you can, obviously I've, I've tested this sort of off screen um, because I was, I was actually using the phone that I was recording with, but you can now airplay in full resolution. And what I did do was I tested it from Apple TV Plus and when I actually airplayed, it not only sent a HDR signal, so it did actually play back in 4K Dolby Vision, but it also uh, sent through Dolby Atmos as well. Now, I don't know whether that pulled it straight from Apple TV on the device as opposed to being um, airplayed from my phone, but essentially it did the same thing. I did do a little test with regards to the video that I actually recorded on my phone as well, and that appeared quite clear as well but until I get some better footage I, I, I can't really test fully but initial um, impressions on that are that the 4k airplay option is working well now. Now one thing that isn't working currently that um, was supposedly coming which was uh, YouTube 4k so um, YouTube was meant to be supporting the VP9 uh, codec which means that you should have been able to switch up to 10, uh, 4K, sorry. Um, I did go in, as you'll see later on in the video, and tested it with some of my videos, and none of them were playing back in uh, anything above 1080p, and it, didn't, it doesn't give you the option to switch to above 1080p either. Now, I did see a video from, I'm, I'm not, I can't remember exactly which you, uh, YouTuber it was, but I did see another video from one of the, the sort of HomeKit channels, the ones that concentrate mainly on HomeKit and uh, Apple Apple products, and they reported that they actually had uh, YouTube working in 4K, but there was no actual video footage, so I'm not sure whether they, they're literally just reporting on a feature that will eventually come, or whether they personally had it working. Um, it's also possible that they didn't use the same beta version that I I'm running currently. I'm not sure if tvOS actually has a second beta as, as the phones, um, did the developer beta as opposed to the public beta but on the first public beta that is um, basically YouTube it, it doesn't give you any option for 4k and I did go into the app store and just double check to make sure that it wasn't um, an older version and there was no that there wasn't a newer version available essentially and basically there, there wasn't so um, that that's a little disappointing but as I said it's something that I'm sure will come in eventually because it is listed as one of the features that will get um, added um, currently obviously I can still use my the built-in app same thing again I can use the built-in app on these LG C9 so it's not it's not a major issue now the beta software itself is very slow so unlike all the other devices um, that most people have tested on and me personally as well on my 6s plus on that particular device is very snappy however what I found was as soon as I booted back and you'll probably notice this in the the clips that I've actually got recorded of any of the interactions with the menus um, so the settings menus as well as just going into certain applications as well It was very very slow and very laggy in in terms of initial loading um, And also with every click so every time you click a um, Mainly the main button so the the center kind of touch touch surface button once you actually click on that It wasn't very responsive at all in terms of your menu and your home. They seem fine the other thing that isn't working is picture in picture. Similarly, again, I, I did see that somebody had this working by air playing to the TV whilst they've got something else playing. I couldn't actually get this working. So if, if you hit uh, menu, it would literally just uh, cancel out of the airplay. And if you hit um, home, same thing again, it would literally just close whatever you had running and just go straight to the home screen. So um, there was no, I wasn't able to get that particular function working, unfortunately. But other than that, in terms of all the apps, everything does appear to be working. So it's not like applications aren't actually working. I've not tested everything, but like like I said, the Infuse app is working fine. I have tested that. That That is actually quite responsive, but I do know that that was one of the applications that has already been updated to support iOS 14. Um, they sent out a message with their recent update and that actually states that they do support iOS 14 already. Um, some of the other, obviously the, the streaming apps are probably gonna be the main ones where if you do run into an issue, it's more than likely gonna be with those for the simple fact that basically that the bigger streaming services they're not going to support a beta um, software so normally whenever you have these beta softwares running uh, your main um, streaming services apart from apples i would expect apples to work but it doesn't always um, 
end up like that and you can also sometimes run it, uh, run into problems with stock apps until you get to a gold master or the actual public re uh, release of the software but anyway this is um, obviously just a first impressions what we'll do is obviously I'll as with the the phone I, every new software that comes out I'll, I'll make an updated version of this particular video um, and any new things that I notice or any features that do become uh, enabled I'll just uh, update you on those as, as we go along just before we do end I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that's already subscribed I've just passed 700 subscribers subscribers today so thank you very much to every single one of you i would ask though if you can just keep sharing on your social media platforms just to help the channel grow a bit more and obviously push me towards that 1000 mark so until the next one thank you very much for watching